people are calling it the most important general election or presidential election uh, in history, or at least in living memory here. Is it, and what is really the nub of it? What is, as I think Joe Biden is saying, that it is for the soul of the nation, is it ultimately that important? I think that it is. Um, I mean, I'm not... I wouldn't argue that it's the most important presidential election in our nation's history, but it certainly is in modern um, in modern history, and it is because it's not just about a presentation of liberal and conservative candidates. Um, they clearly differ uh, on a host of issues, and that matters, but there's a real sense that our democracy is at a precipice, and that with populism rising in our country, and racial strife, and rising inequality between the rich and the poor, and and all kinds of attacks on democratic institutions um, by the incumbent president, uh, that there's a lot more at stake than just a set of policy choices. It's about the health and well-being of our democracy. Very much hangs in the balance. Um, also about America's place in the world here, perhaps unilateralism versus multilateralism. In uh, the last four years, we've seen uh, an administration which is really not gone to its allies and even gone to its enemies at times as well, as opposed to taking an approach and using your allies uh, in a multilateral sense. Yeah, I think that that's exactly right. Um, you know, we've withdrawn from all kinds of international treaties. We've taken a much more aggressive posture towards allies. Um, and we've courted and flirted with longstanding foes for the last three and a half, four years. Um, but it's not even clear what those positions are in the service of some sort of larger uh, objective, what grand strategy is being played out. Rather, this is really about us withdrawing from the world, what's happened, what we've seen over the last several years, um, and taking a much more kind of aggressive unilateral posture, as you've said. Um, we'll see. I, I think that this is a place where there clearly are, you know, policy differences, foreign policy differences between uh, the two choices that are being put before us. Um, but the relevance of the democratic stakes play out not just at home, but also abroad. Um, and so it isn't just that, you know, this beacon of democracy really? that the United States may be flagging. It's that that has real implications for our, our ability to maintain relationships with the rest of the world. William, do you anticipate that we'll see a result which will reflect what happened in 2016, indicative of a polarized nation? Well, I think we are a polarized nation. Um, a blowout here, if we get one, I think the only per the only candidate who stands a chance of you know winning big here is Biden. If the polls are you know have any semblance of truth, um, but even in the world in which he blows out uh, Trump in the electoral college, uh, there's still going to be 45 percent of the country who's willing to stand, who does stand with Trump, and they disagree vehemently with the supporters of Biden. We are a polarized country. There's no getting around that. Uh, William, help us understand the election dynamics. Have voters been better off under President Trump? We see wages are higher, home prices are higher, stock market's doing better. Uh, and even though unemployment is rising, it is getting better, especially in those swing states. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, what, what, what's the point of comparison? Is the point of comparison rising in the last several months, or is the point of comparison rising since... March, when we had, you know, the fallout of the economy? Do we want to play out over the last three and a half years, in which case a lot of the trend lines are kind of a linear projection of what we observed under, um, under Obama? Uh, but look, there are a number of economic indicators that are strong, and that's why, in no small part, Trump um, uh, was pretty upset about the pandemic interrupting what was going to be, you know, Exhibit A, for his case for re-election, that the hit that the pandemic has had on, on our domestic economy has been profound. Um, and he sees that as taking away his, his biggest uh, argument for, for, for re-election. How will legal action shape this election? <laughs> it's a good question. I mean, I think a lot depends upon the clarity of the results that we observe tomorrow. Um, so, look, if it is a, if it is a blowout, uh, then and there's sort of no room for Trump to push back, that's one that's one sort of scenario. Um, 
most likely though it's going to be pretty close and in a world in which it's pretty close then it's going to get down to a handful of states and trump has been laying the groundwork over the last several months to push back against early voting to raise questions about the efficacy of our elections to suggest that there's all kinds of fraud um, all evidence to the contrary but raising all kinds of, of questions about it i think there are concerns that he might prematurely declare victory that he will launch a whole host of uh, legal challenges in a number of key states. Um, there's a small chance that 24 hours from now, we'll know who the next president is. There's a larger chance, though, that this is going to play out for you know the coming three, four, five days. And if it goes longer, it's going to be because there are a set of legal challenges that come into play. Both the Democrats and the Republican lawyers are lining up in droves ready to um, challenge all sorts of aspects about this election.